episode of Side Talk. Today I have Rebecca Hamilton. She is a uh, oldie but goodie. <laughs> <laughs> oh she, my gosh. <laughs> she appeared on the Oh Hell No podcast episode 116 and um, you know we had a great conversation and she shared her journey with us. She talked about the law of attraction and just all of the ways that it has affected her life and you know how she's rooted in that. Um, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about a law, law of attraction, but we're going to talk about energy. So um, I just want to welcome you to Side Talk. Rebecca, thank you for being here. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to, to be here and talk with you about it, all of this kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So I follow Rebecca on Instagram and she has the best posts just about <laughs> real life stuff. And this is one of the posts that I saw that I love. Be raw, be honest, be fucking real, because the last thing the world needs is more fake shit. True. So that, that kind of <laughs> stuff always resonates with me because I feel like I'm, I'm pretty real, but mm-hmm. it's hard to, you know, find people who are, um, you know, moving on the same wavelength as you or as you know, real as, Mm -hmm. you know, you are. So I saw uh, Rebecca posted something and and she said something about energy and dominant energy. And I was like, oh my God, like, what is that? (laughs) Uh, You know, how do you do that? You know, because I always feel like sometimes if you know that there's going to be some energy in a place that you're invited to, for me, the first thing I do is say, I'm not going because I don't want to be around that kind of energy. But wow. I think your theory, um, you you can help us to understand how we can go to different places with different types of energy and still be okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what is dominant energy. So dominant energy is like exactly that. And what tends to happen is that, so this is a, a an example that I've given my son when he was playing football. Um, you see all the O-line guys and the D-line guys. So these are the two sets of really big guys on the field and both, all of them are big, right? And they're all pretty fast. So the only thing different about them is energetically who believes it more. You know what I'm saying? Like who, who is stepping up to that line and is stepping up with the dominant energy, meaning they have set their energy up more, their energy is more set. They're like more rooted in their energy than the guy in front of them. And that's, that's all, I mean, like all of this really does just tie back to law of attraction. It really all is about your energy and how you're attracting things to you. And we tend to like to give other people way more credit than they deserve for what's showing up in our lives. But when we start to like take that accountability piece, and when we start to decide, okay, Like this thing is happening, but I get to choose how I want to feel or how I want to move or whatever. The universe will start to move things for you. So for instance, like you said, if you're going to a place and if I have dominant energy, meaning I set my energy, I was intentional about it and I'm holding a belief that supports it. So you really have to have all of those pieces in order to kind of set that energy. So when I walk in a place, Um, there's going to be a ton of different things coming at you, but if your energy is set, if there's somebody who does not vibe with you, you're just not going to run into them. Maybe they go to the bathroom at the same time you start to walk by, or maybe they get called over there while you get called over here. And so it's like, what's happening outside of us really is a reflection of us. And I feel like in the first stages of me sort of getting into law of attraction, I was really playing the cutoff game a lot. And, and don't get me wrong. Like I still play it a little bit because it just needs to happen. Cause I always say like law of attraction energy, this is a thing that's like, when you're really a hundred percent there, um, there is never a crowd at the leading edge. And that's something that Wayne Dyer used to say. And I completely got that because like energy, spirituality, like this whole journey of really trying to 
to become more of who you are can sometimes feel a little bit lonely because you feel like, well, there's not a lot of people there on that path. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I'm, I'm kind of going a little, a little bit of everything. No, but, but yeah, but you're <laughs> saying stuff that's, that resonates with me. Like, yeah, I do feel like sometimes I can, it's like I'm on a lonely path because I feel like a lot of people just aren't in the place where the people that I know aren't mm-hmm. in the place where they're doing that work, that hard work with themselves and, mm-hmm. you know, figuring out what's making them miserable, how they can get to their happy place, how to love themselves. And I just don't have time for people who are not in that place or getting right. to that place, you know, yeah. especially totally. if it's like, creeping into my damn energy. Like, if, <laughs> you know, if your shit is messed up and you right. are to project that onto me, then yeah. I really have a problem. If you know that you are a work in progress and you're still fighting that battle, I don't have any problems walking with people like that, but yeah. you know what I mean? So there's like a difference, but I totally feel what you're saying when you say the cutoff game, which I guess that's alluding to like cutting people off, right? People who are not. Yeah, like, it. yeah, it's been like this whole thing though. It's like somehow that makes you strong. But in reality, like, I actually don't think that's where strength is. I mean, I I do the cutoff game. I'm, I'm like a solitary person anyway, not solitary. I, I, I definitely like to hang out and mingle with people. But at the same time, I like my, my alone time um, just to reconnect and do the things. But you know, for a long time, like you would just see it. It was everywhere. It's like, people would be like, oh, I'll be quick to cut you off. And da, da, da. And it's like, like, as if that meant strength, when in actuality, changing the inside of you to attract something different energetically is harder, much harder to consistently do that than it is to just cut off things. So for instance, like, you know, um, I don't know if you've had this experience, but I know I have, I'll be feeling amazing. I'm like hanging out at home. Maybe I woke up, maybe I did my meditation or maybe I wrote some appreciation, spoke to my husband, pet the dog, whatever. And I go out into the world and then somebody pisses me off and I'm like, wait, that person just pissed me off. And I was, I'm in good energy, but this person is pissing me off. So I need to cut off that person. But in reality, if I energetically take some more responsibility and I'm always pushing for like more accountability, cause that's to me where freedom is hanging out. Like freedom is in accountability because then I get to make the moves and I'm not looking for other people to change for me to feel better. Right. And so when you do that and you stop making that person accountable, that's when you are really having the dominant energy. And it's not something that you know, I always say like, you know, you know this because you're on this journey. So you understand like this is an evolving thing. Like we're never getting going to get it done. We're always going to be having to stay on that. That's not something where it's like, okay, have dominant energy now. So I'm good forevermore. (laughs) It's like every single day we work at these things, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because like you said, you're tested (laughs) every (laughs) single day, right? Exactly. Um, remain in control. I also spoke to another person that I had on my show who's really into um, the law of attraction. She's like a certified law of attraction coach and all this stuff too. And um, she talked about being like filling yourself up with positive energy so that when you go out and you run into these people that that are just negative for whatever reason, it really doesn't affect you because you're just so full of this yeah. positive energy that it's just like, you know, someone cuts you in the line. You're like, go ahead. I'll wait. Like, you know, right. It's, it's, yeah. It's a focus game. It's, right. it's completely a focus game. And when we deal with people that are in our lives, when it comes to that, you know, becoming the dominant energy, I always say like, so it, you know, take your five most favorite people and grab a notebook or get the remarkable two, because I just got one and it's this paperless notebook. But anyway, um, get this because I have so many notebooks. I'm a notebookaholic. Get a notebook and write each of their names at the top of the page and then start writing down what the things are that you love about them. And this sound might sound a little bit corny, but 
at the end of the day, what happens is, is that we start meeting people at our expectations of them. So as they start to show us something and we go, yeah, but it's their fault because they've been acting like this. It's like, but back again to this accountability and to like, where do I want to focus? How do I want to feel? Because everybody has different sides. So like the lady, like my seventh grade teacher who really didn't like me, Miss O'Quinn, she, she thought I was a terrible person. I don't know why. And I really didn't like her. We just didn't click, but she had people who loved her and there were certainly people she was nice to, but I wasn't evoking that from her. So I like to take like my, my top people who I really, that relationship matters and start shifting my focus so that I'm not focusing on everywhere we've been, but I'm focusing on the things that really resonate about them to me so that they start showing up more like that to me. Because again, if I'm focused there in my, in my writing in that moment, and I'm really recreating it, then when I come in contact with them, I'm more likely to see those sides of them. And that is dominant energy too. Right. But let's say that you have um, a friend or, or a family member in your life that um, shows up with a lot of funky energy the energy is all over the place it's good it's bad it's happy it's not happy it's positive it's not positive it's just all over the place all inconsistencies right that Uh sets off alarms to most people who are really connected you know when it comes to energy and vibes and and being connected with yourself right so it could be stuff going on in their life it could be whatever And I get what you're saying about dominating your energy, but how can you continue to maintain any type of relationship with someone who's not taking accountability for their energy and for their things? And then you're trying to have a honest and good relationship with that person. Well, those are two different things because there's relationship standards that I am going to set and I'm going to have regardless. Mm -hmm. So nobody is going to have the ability or access to continually um, take me on a trip. Basically, I'm not going to let that happen. But at the same time, like if you really think about it, what we're getting from other people is very much also a reflection like the way that we're seeing it so if somebody is up and down and up and down my thing is always to go back to myself and go okay so I'm seeing them like this but I'm also have an expectation at some point like just getting super honest about like okay do I expect that from them like am I showing up wondering where they're at or am I showing up expecting them to be in a good mood do you know what I mean like where I I think there's more more to dig in on that than just that and to me it really depends on how important the relationship is I'm not going to um go crazy or spend a ton of time on a relationship that is not super important. So if it's my mom or, you know, uh, my husband, my son, something like that, then of course I'm going to do whatever I need to do um, to the best of my ability. I mean, as long as everybody's showing up and and doing what they can, but I mean, I think there, I, I just think there's more than just that to it. And it's easy to say, but that person is doing that. And I always wonder, because if law of attraction is true, right? And what does law of attraction say? What's like into itself is drawn, right? So what is like itself is drawn to itself. So why are you having that experience in that moment? And so, I mean, you can just take it a lot easier and not not push on it. But again, it's that focus. It's that showing up. So if you show up with that person, what is your expectation when you show up? That'd be the question I would want to know. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like, (laughs) I feel like I get what you're saying, but I also feel like there's this other piece of it where they say that you have to follow your intuition because your intuition is your guide. And if your intuition is telling you that there's something off about a person, a situation, a place or whatever, you have Mm -hmm. to, you know, you have to pay attention to that. So yeah, I think you should reflect. I do a lot of reflecting. I never always look at a situation from one perspective. I always think, how could I have changed this? What did I do to contribute to it? Whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I spend too much time doing that. You know, <laughs> like, it's like, let it go, Elsa, you know, but right. 
I do that. So I feel like the thing that can get confusing about this these theories is that if you are supposed to follow your intuition and your vibe and you have a situation with a friend, a family member, someone, a boyfriend, whatever, and you're getting these vibes, like, how do you- What are the vibes? I don't what know. The, what if the vibes are like, um, he's cheating on me or something? Like if you have a boyfriend or whatever, and you feel like he's cheating on you, is that, should you be listening to that intuition vibes? Or is that something you're projecting because maybe you're insecure or you're on, you don't trust easily? Like, how do you differentiate? Well, so this is what I'll say about inspiration. And I know this a thousand percent to be true is that your intuition will never scare you. And your intuition is never like, it's always a feeling of ease when you're following it. So I hear people use intuition in so many different ways. And I don't believe that most of what people talk about is actually intuition or inspiration. Um, If you think your uh, husband or boyfriend is cheating on you, my guess is he probably is. Uh, I don't think that. Um, Let's just make it clear now, Rebecca. Not me. (laughs) No, 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 not you. Not you. Not you. No, no, no. But I'm just saying like in general, you know, I think people try to talk themselves out of a truth that they know. And so also something about coming to being honest with yourself, like, you know, that is what, that just takes all of that digging down and figuring out what are you worth? I mean, coming up with your standards and all of that. And maybe all of those things need to happen before you try to be the dominant energy, because remember, you have to have that belief in place in order to have it. So a lot of people also are asking for things they won't give. And so it makes relationships very, um, very tedious and, and, and up and down because, you know, people aren't being honest about what they want, who they are, what they're willing to give, you know, so relationships is a whole nother subject. Right. But that's about. what I'm saying to you about, even though like a person like me, who mm-hmm. spends time working on their energy, spends time working on, you know, um, making sure that I'm showing up correct, that I'm checking myself when I need to. How do I know when, okay, I'm going too far with my, this energy thing. Cause like, I'm telling you, if I, if my energy is not feeling you, I'm not messing with you, period. Like I just, I'm the same. yeah. And, yeah. And if I go some, if I know that there are people who I'm not feeling their energy for whatever reason, um, if there's going to be a, if it's going to be like a intimate setting and they're going to be there, I will opt out because my thought process is I don't want to be around that type of energy. Right. I have yeah. to put time, put my makeup on, get my, you know, outfit ready, <laughs> <laughs> driving all the way here to go sit around some stank ass energy. Like, no, no I feel that. Right. Well, so, but that's not even, but, but check this out though, because like, to me, I'm always looking for the path of least resistance. So I'm never going to force myself to go somewhere to make myself have dominant energy to make myself feel okay. Like that's never going to happen. I, nothing is that important to me. So opting out girl, I would be the first to opt out <laughs> of something. You don't have to like you. I mean, it's best to not invite me because the likelihood, like, I'm just not, you know, so I, I completely get that. And I don't think that you just, I don't think that you have to use dominant energy in that situation, but like, I look at it like, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. If I'm in a sales situation, if I'm talking to a client, if I'm more sure in myself, if I understand what value I bring to the table, if I have done that work and become the dominant energy, then I'm more likely to get the sale. If I'm, I mean, we've even seen it work. Like, as you know, my husband is in prison and for a crime he didn't commit. And we're still working on that. And we've even seen that work even in that situation. So I know for sure, like dominant, dominant energy is what rules every single situation that you're in. Somebody in your proximity has the dominant energy and everybody else is acquiescing to it. And I'm I'm like, as you move forward, just go and look. It doesn't mean you're doing what they want. It just means everybody is acquiescing to it because that energy is what's attracting. Yes. And you're now it makes 
sense to me. I have like this situation at my current place of employment and Mm -hmm. we have a client who has very dominant energy and um, that energy tends to dominate everything and um, everyone except me. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. (laughs) So um, I was able to tame that energy and work with it and get what I needed to get done. So when you said it in that way, now I totally understand what dominant energy is and what the difference is between that and knowing where to spend your energy and where not to. (laughs) Yeah. Cause I feel like they're almost different places. It's like, you know, it's like, um, the dominant energy is those, you know, yeah. So it, it, exactly that. But yeah, I do think it can get a little convoluted when you start trying to apply it to a bunch of different situations. Yes. And I think that's what the misunderstanding was for me is that I was thinking that when you said that it meant, Hey, if you know, your bestie has three besties that you can't stand and it's her birthday party, <laughs> go anyway and be the dog. Oh. Like, no. No, no, but my thing is like, like I said, like, I feel like let's, let's create and attract our world because we are already. So yeah. like, let's attract and create our world based on what we want, not what we're bouncing off of other people, not what, you know, somebody else wants. And so we're acquiescing in this way and we're, you know, bending in all these different ways. So dominant energy is really just about creating the world that you want, regardless of what other people think or feel about it, but not in a negative way, not in a, you know, you know, not in a fuck you way in a, I'm good. I appreciate what you're saying. I can hear your feedback, but I'm going to do it this way and I'm not hurting anybody. So you do you and I'll do me. Yes. And that's how you exercise your dominant energy without offending others, right? Right, because dominant energy shouldn't be offensive. And I think that's where I was going with the cutoff thing is that it becomes like this vindictive thing or whatever. And when you're like in the flow and you are really feeling your own energy at that higher level, that leveled up type of energy, you don't even need to do that. Like you, there's no need. You're not trying to hurt anybody. You're just so much on a, on a path towards where you're going that everything else is like, whatever. Yeah. I also noticed too, that, you know, God kind of like shifts things so that, like you said, if you go someplace and you, you you know, your energy is kind of just kind of attracting what it should be so like the negative person that you don't really want to be around like they might be in the bathroom when you go here or you go there like right you totally see that or you see how things can just shift in a way like certain things will unfold to remove certain people from your life in a certain way so I have definitely seen that and that's what confirms to me that I wasn't tripping when I said Yeah, but it's crazy or you know, <laughs> exactly <laughs> or that person, yeah, you just, just dodged a bullet you just right a bullet. <laughs> so yeah absolutely yeah I, no yeah I love these energy uh conversations because it just you know makes me feel more comfortable about the way I think and the way that I feel because sometimes I feel like I'm over feeling. (laughs) Yeah, well, you're probably sensitive. Like I'm very sensitive too. And I can spot bullshit, like try it if you want to, but I know what you're thinking, whether you're going to tell me or not. I know how you're feeling. Like when you're sensitive and we're taught that being sensitive is bad, like, oh, you're too sensitive or you're a crybaby, or you're this or you're that. But guess what? Whenever you get a hold of that energy, that is some bomb stuff because you can really feel your way through a lot better than people who are not sensitive. So, you know, just like you said, if you, if you come in contact with somebody and it's a funky vibe, you know, what's up, like, you know, what's up quicker than other people, um, who are maybe not as tuned in. And I believe anybody can get sensitive. It's just about tuning in to the energy around you and how you really feel. And I don't think that most of us really take time to feel in our body, like where energy is hitting us. 
how things are moving. Where does that negative energy hit? Where does that ease hit? Where is your path of least resistance? Where do you feel that in your body? I think that's something we could all get really a lot better at. Yeah. And I think that, like you said earlier, a lot of people are lying to themselves and they don't want to feel, they don't want to see, they just kind of want to be on autopilot and just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not be responsible. Like, oh, well, I'm just not going to even, you know, they hang around people that don't serve them. They go, you know, just because they're, I don't know, maybe in pain or they don't want to do the work because it's, it's hard work to really work on yourself and get to that place where you can be honest with yourself about things and, and, you know, do better. Feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Just feel good. <laughs> like yeah. that's what I was working on from day one. When I when I caught law of attraction when I was 19, I was so excited, not about the money, because everybody always pushes law of attraction in the money situation, which it does come because money is energy, right? Mm-hmm. But the thing that was most exciting to me was that I could feel good and I could I could be okay no matter what. And that to me was like safety that to me was freedom. That to me was like everything. So for me, like all of this type of stuff, this energy realm of like, how do you keep yourself in a good space? You know, it is all just this big focus game. And it's this also this big game of being real too. Like the people who just push being positive, 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 just talk about positive things is is just as far off path as people who are just completely negative. There's a balance in there. Yep, absolutely. I totally agree. Well, I love this conversation. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about dominant energy and yeah. how we can exercise our dominant energy the right ways and the wrong ways and that we should pay attention to those feelings and pay attention to energy and, you know, work on ourselves. It's a, it's a, it's an everyday thing, right? Yeah. So thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming on again. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Do you have anything you want to plug? Is there anything we should know about? Where should we follow you? Tell us again, girl. I mean, you can come find me on Instagram at she's unoffendable. I have a website at she's unoffendable.com. And right now I'm just doing the basics because I'm going to going to school to get my law degree. So um, what the heck, girl, I'm- you didn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, why not add one more thing? So, um, but I figure we want to give back. So I have a passion for that. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. That's dope. I love it. I wish you all the best. Thank and when you get that law degree, you got to come back and talk about how you did that. <laughs> yes, girl. Give me, give me a couple years. I'm doing the accelerated program. So be there before you know it. Yes, it will. It's time to go myself back.